Alright, so I'm going to be working on a video series about uh, Hegel and his philosophy. Uh, essentially, this first video is, and next series of videos is going to be a uh, recollective uh, overview of what his uh, system and project of philosophy is really all about and going through a number of uh, different uh, principles that are uh, essentially um, summarize and uh, to get a sense of people who are new to the topic, uh, essentially what uh, he's all about. All right, so the one of the major things to take of note here um, about him is essentially the the background of uh, philosophy that he is essentially uh, responding to. Um, much of philosophy uh, before Hegel and before uh, the German idealism in general uh, was essentially more concerned with a um, pre-critical kind of uh, metaphysics. And what I mean by pre-critical is that um, most of philosophy during the classical period, and more specifically uh, Greek philosophy, was more concerned with uh, trying to describe the object or things out there um, independently of, of any kind of uh, subjective uh, perception, really. So with this, you, you have, um, early on in Greek philosophy, you have essentially this idea that much of what was considered the object or substance was uh, very observationally centric. So this principle have, has been argued whether it would be water or uh, pure being or or if there is no such substance, if it's all just illusory, or if the four elements. Essentially, the, this was very focused on um, trying to identify things out there in the world and trying to ground everything else uh, in that thing. And uh, this kind of project uh, was something that, that Kant, uh, Manuel Kant, took note of as uh, not sufficiently uh, bringing in the the subject or the person who is essentially uh, perceiving the the object in in question. So, uh, and, and this was essentially introduced to Kant by uh, Hume or Hume's David Hume's problem of of, of knowledge. Either uh, you know if it if it's all based on uh, sense experience out there, then how can we essentially, how is knowledge or any kind of knowledge uh, possible at all? And it, essentially, uh, Kant's major response to this was that he, um, instead of taking the subject, uh, instead of, sorry, instead of taking the object out there, he starts with the, the subject or Really, really, the a priori kinds of um, the a priori uh, determination of uh, knowledge to begin with. So he essentially Kant here assumes that there are um, what we perceive out there in the uh, what he calls the noumenal realm is essentially what is everything that is before the subjective uh, perception. And uh, we essentially have intuitions of space and, and time, but this is very much 
uh, centric to how the mind essentially classifies and brings together what appears to be out there and brings it into a synthetic understanding of what we even have knowledge about. So, and, and Kant believes that the mind has this innate, um, uh, innate kind of quality or, or property to it that allows us to understand well, he, he calls this faculty the understanding, which is essentially to 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 take a bunch of things or, or uh, uh, intuitions out there and combines them into finite uh, propositional statements. And uh, the understanding is something that will actually appear uh, later on uh, with Hegel. So Kant essentially goes through uh, everything in the in his critique of pure reason as providing uh, his account of how we can arrive at um, essentially a description of, of pure reason itself or pure science that is before any kind of um, purely empirical or, or rational kind of objective determination that that leaves out the subject so but there there is a major problem or or flaw in um kant's project in that he simply describes you know how the mind is able to comprehend all of these things but he doesn't really explain where these come from uh at least he just presents these as if they are given. Um, there, there's not really much of a justification as to why he even um, uh, believes these categories are, are uh, fundamental to anything. So, uh, and so, so after uh, Kant, this is something that... Um, uh, Gottlieb uh, Fichte uh, takes notice of, and he essentially examines uh, Kant's uh, project as uh, not really systematically uh, derived. And, and the, the idea of a system is very important for uh, the German idealists uh, after Kant to, to begin with. So uh, Fichte's main objection is that if he conceives or that he conceives of Kant's philosophy as, as essentially a foundation or something that is given and but he, he doesn't really justify what this this foundation is of, of how all other things come out of that and philosophies prior to Kant simply had that foundation as well except instead of having the subject or mind or the categories uh, they they had it as the substance of which all other accidents or um, dependent sorts of objects were determined by. Um, but Fichte essentially sees everything as as a as a circle, right? Where where can the the system of knowledge provides its its own uh, foundations. Now for Fichte, this complete circle is the the absolute or what he calls the absolute and he has the starting point as the the eye or and the eye for Fichte is essentially uh, a very important concept to him it's 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 a central concept because that is why he or, or where he believes the the starting point is for the the system so essentially he goes through this of of the the abstract i or or the self this is my own uh consciousness and this consciousness is in order to understand itself 
it has to understand what is other to it, or the non-I. So you, you have a reality, and then you have a negation. You have the I, and you have the non-I. Now, uh, contrary to what some people think about Hegel, they, they kind of erroneously think that he thinks specifically in terms of a thesis, antithesis, and then these, these are magically resolved into a synthesis. Uh, this is essentially uh, what uh, Fichte's method was. This, this was not Hegel's. Uh, um, nowhere in, in Hegel will you, you find this formula uh, used, really anywhere. And uh, these are not the terms that he, that he uses. And uh, uh, in the next uh, video, I will uh, expand exactly on what uh, Hegel's method is. But uh, back to Fichte. So he goes through this process of, of the I, the non-I. So if there is a distinction between the I and the non-I, uh, but the non-I is not some thing in itself that cannot be known because Kant essentially had this problem of he posited a thing in itself which was taken to be the source of knowledge but he placed this outside the the noumenal realm so we only know the noumenal realm specifically because it is filtered through the categories that we have in our own minds and and this was not really a satisfactory explanation and this was something that Fichte and, and uh and others uh, knew. So, Fichte, the non-I is essentially the intersubjective reality of, of uh, other eyes or of, of other uh, conscious beings, and that it is this through this interaction or intersubjective uh, interaction of other eyes that is what forms the the absolute I, uh, which, you know, he is also kind of bringing in uh, uh, religion here, uh, or the notion of God. Um, now, uh, Frederick uh, Schelling and uh, Hegel as well, uh, they, they both disagree with uh, uh, Fichte's main idea here. And, and wh why is it that they disagree? Well, for one, the main criticism is that they believe that uh, Fichte's system is too uh, subjective, that uh, specifically he has this idea of a transcendental logic or metaphysics that is coupled with a kind of process of knowing uh, of or, or how we are even able to, to reason about logical meanings uh, itself. But this is specifically, uh, or Schelling's critique of this, is that it leaves out nature. And this is really important for, for Schelling to have a philosophy of nature. So essentially what you see with uh, uh, Schelling is uh, for him he's still very much uh, centrally in tune with the 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 absolute the 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 system of of, of nature but or the system of, of science being or in, including nature but uh, for for Schelling nature isn't really identified with with God in, in the uh, Spinoza sense, where you have a, a, a stated equality of, of God is substance or uh, that God is equal to nature. Uh, both Schelling and uh, Hegel here uh, as well uh, think that there is, you know, there is God is uh, within nature as, you know, he uh, created nature, but uh, he is also uh, outside of of this uh, nature as uh, as well. So, 
and, and this brings us to the the one of the main differences between uh, Schelling and, and Hegel. Uh, and, and since this is kind of a short shorter video, um, I'd like to be able to address these uh, differences in, in, in an article or writing form. But just for the sake of brevity, I'll, I'll comment uh, specifically about uh, what it is that uh, Schelling uh, uh, states specifically about the about the uh, the system in general. Uh, so, it, one of the main differences is that the kind of logical method that uh, Schelling uses is uh, he kind of gets away with a certain logical trick uh, that kind of plays on the law of uh, contradiction where he essentially is able to or not really successfully uh, deduce that all other determinate beings or uh, individual beings within nature since you know they all share this a common one medium of of the absolute it, it creates an, an abstract identity or or of uh, uh, a is equal to a uh, so but for for Hegel he essentially is very concerned with having a method of reasoning that is able to generate the form and content of the the system all on its own and unlike uh kant who he just sort of assumes the uh a lot of these uh transcendental categories on its own without really deriving them and uh unlike a fichte who starts with uh, the i and uh uh, Schelling more specifically with uh, being or the kind of uh, determination of, of being that is more centrally concerned with uh, nature. Uh, Hegel specifically, his project is centrally about a uh, presuppositionalist uh, system and or, or this system as providing its own foundations and he essentially starts off with this with a uh, pure um, immediacy and uh, so after uh, this uh, to, to kind of bring together this as the end of the the introductory video uh, in the next one I'll talk about the uh, his, his what this speculative method of Hegel's actually is and you know I've developed a kind of, of concept diagrams or visual diagrams that I'll be able to um, essentially describe what his method is and how do you essentially approach his system in, in an intelligible uh, manner. So, yes, yeah, so, uh, see you next time.